In today's video, we're going to talk about the point of safe return or point of no return, which are essentially the same thing. And I'm going to show you how to determine where that point is using the Pulley's CRP5 flight computer. Not many people know that you can use the CRP5 to calculate the PNR. And it's not even in your manual, but I'm going to show you how that's done and you can use this method to check your calculations should you use the uh, formula method or you can use the CRP5 to determine the point of safe return and then check it using your calculated formula. So let's jump right into it. Let's make some assumptions and the assumptions we will make are that our safe endurance is five hours and we're flying a jet aircraft, which means we have a mandatory reserve of 30 minutes. Our speed will be 300 knots, and we're going to have a headwind component from our origin airport or departure airport onwards to our destination. Now, the safe endurance of five hours simply means that we can fly for five hours before we will start to consume our mandatory reserve of 30 minutes. And we're not supposed to be consuming the mandatory reserve without good reason. So we won't need our mandatory reserves for this calculation. We are going to make use of the 300 knots and 50 knots in order to come up with the numbers that are important to us and that is safe endurance is 5 hours. Our ground speed out would have been 300 knots with a headwind component of 50, so our ground speed out would be 250. And when we turn the aircraft around and come back, that headwind component of 50 knots will now be a tailwind, and our ground speed home will be 350 knots. The sum of our ground speed out and ground speed home would be 600 knots. Now, why is this important to us? Well, we need to know. 5 hours, we need to know 250, we need to know 350, and we need to know that 250 and 350 add up to 600, because even though we are not using a formula to derive this calculation, we do have a pictorial kind of format in order to use the CRP5 to determine point of no return, or point of safe return, depends on your glass is half empty or half full kind of argument. Right, so we're going to substitute those numbers into this schematic over here. And let me just explain that to you and you'll find out how simple that is. We have this line over here that divides the outer scale from the inner scale. So all the numbers on the outer scale are stationary and the inner scale actually moves. So we're going to put ground speed home on the outer scale and we're going to put the sum of the ground speed out and the ground speed home on the inner scale and we're going to line that up. And we had determined that the ground speed home is 350 knots and the sum of both speeds is 600 knots. So we're going to look around for 300 knots on the outside and that happens to be on the other side of the CRP5. So let me turn that around. And 350 is... Uh, right there, so 35, and I'm going to stick a cursor on it. Pardon my parallax error, working behind a camera. 350 knots will be my ground speed home, and we're matching that to the summation of our ground speed out and, and ground speed home, which would be 600 knots. And as we know, 60 always sits in a black triangle, and we align 350 knots up with 600 knots. And that's what we see here. Ground speed home over ground speed out plus ground speed home. 35, 600. And on the other side, we're going to line up safe endurance and the time that it will take us to fly from our origin aerodrome or departure aerodrome to that point which is known as the PSR or PNR. And we know that safe endurance is five hours. What we don't know is where the uh, point of safe return is, 
and we don't know how long it will take us to fly there using our onwards ground speed. So we're going to look for five hours and we find five hours actually sitting here. So we're going to line up safe endurance of five hours and we're not going to move anything because we've already lined up the ground speed home against the ground speeds uh, out and home. And as we can see, five hours of endurance lines up nicely with 2.9 something of an hour. I'm going to say it's 2.92 yeah, hours. Okay, so I'm just going to write that down. 2.92 hours. The time that it takes to fly to our point of safe return is 2.92 hours. And that would be 2.92 hours flying from departure aerodrome. And when we leave our departure aerodrome at a speed of 300 knots and a headwind component of 50 knots, we're actually leaving at a ground speed of 250 knots. 2.92 hours at 250 knots gets me the distance to go to reach our point of safe return. And that gives me approximately 730 nautical miles. So I'm going to put this aside and I'm going to do the formula manually and we're going to see if we come up with the same result. And we're going to do a quick calculation using the formula method where we know that the time to the point of safe return is equal to the aircraft's safe endurance multiplied by the ground speed home. And I'm going to put that in brackets and that's over the ground speed out or ground speed onwards plus ground speed home. And we know that the endurance is equals to 5 hours and the ground speed home is 350. And we know that the summation of those two ground speeds is 600. So let's work that out. 5 times 350 is 1750 and we're going to divide that by 600. And that's 2.917 hours or 2 hours and 55 minutes. Now, if we fly 2 hours and 55 minutes at our ground speed out, which means from that departure aerodrome uh, and we're flying along until we reach the point of safe return, we would have reached a distance of, and I'm going to multiply that by 250, which is our ground speed out, and that will give me 729.167 nautical miles. And let me compare, let us compare that against the answer that we got when using the CRP5, 730 miles. We're uh, just a couple of decimal places off um, in determining how far the point of safe return is from our origin or our departure aerodrome. And that's all there is to it.